Good morning, good morning, good morning to me. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> one day, one day I'm going to sing that without laughing. Where's that emotion coming from? What is that? Like, shy embarrassment? I don't know. But uh, I've been feeling uh, not so great and like a little bit in a funk. Not Nothing crazy, but just, you know, just right under the surface for a few months. And I'm like, oh, it's because I'm not using my beautiful voice to sing. Like, the most I've sang in my life was when I was in a mental hospital, hiding in a closet, singing good morning to you guys every day. So I said, I haven't been singing in a while. I got to bring that back. So sorry if I'm a little rusty. Shikoba, good morning all. Uh, 531 and all that beautifulness. I just did my 531 uh, um, before I sang, and I'm not going to repeat it, but you guys could do one. Um... I have a real question. I need a, I need perspective and I would like some help today. And this isn't a bit, this isn't a gag. This isn't content. This is actually a real thing that's been on my mind for the last 48 hours. And instead of holding it, keeping it myself and, and, you know, driving myself mad, I am not a conspiracy theorist. I'm not a superstitious person until I am. And what I mean by that is I, I don't I don't get into all that stuff. When people say I saw a ghost or, you know, uh, what's your sign and start going into what, you know, astrological stuff or, you know, especially my Vegas days when, um, you know, especially with the Chinese snowman monkey barbecue and, uh, you know, uh, Americans, they don't have um, 13th floor in a lot of buildings, like all that kind of stuff. Like, I don't care about it. I don't believe in it. Someone says, uh, you want to buy this house because uh, it's half off because it's haunted and there's ghosts that live there. I, I don't care about that. And then sometimes I do. And so I say all that to tell you about two, what I, what I perceive as two very strange, very rare, you know, like I feel like I should go buy a lottery ticket right now. So my, my father... Uh, has moved my papa my daddy uh who's he's old he's 77 he he's he's hanging in there i love that man he's so cute he just moved to uh, a neighborhood in in los angeles where every single one of his neighbors is armenian it's an armenian neighborhood a lot of pomegranate trees uh nice people and when i say he just moved i mean like last week just moved like just moved and the reason why he moved there is because he suffered a stroke a few years ago and the house that he was living in had too many stairs and he was tripping and falling which is like the worst i've fallen and i can't get up and so we found this flat house no stairs and he could just uh gimp around there and um but you know he's old he doesn't speak english that well anymore he forgot everything so weird he used to speak perfect english to me 40 years ago and now he can't you know, put a sentence together. He just speaks Korean. Uh, so instead of finding a nice uh, condo or something in Koreatown, he decides, you know, well, let's be honest, my mom decides they're, they're moving to, you know, this neighborhood. And um, something insane happens. Absolutely insane. Less than 24 hours of moving into this house. He's, uh, so he's figured out how to use... Uh, Netflix, which he didn't, I, he could only watch it when I came, came over. Like I'd have to set it up and show him how to log in. And, uh, you know, you just hit two buttons and, or just one button, but he just, I don't know, he couldn't figure it out. And now he's so advanced. So I, oh, it wasn't that he didn't know how to turn on Netflix. He didn't know how to get to the Korean dramas. And so he's, you know, it's been a few years now. He's like ripped through all of those. He's seen everything. And, uh, he's figured out now how to use the subtitle button on uh on just regular shows so uh, i don't know my dad's like 
he's just into like death like he watches like Dahmer and all the murder stuff oh David you watch Dahmer <laughs> Dumber, Dumb and Dumber no Dumber. why the fuck are you watching that shit man so he's in his living room and once again like I said this ain't a bit that I'm not exaggerating this is this happened this is I don't know what the chances of this are broad daylight on a weekday Tuesday weekday he's watching Dahmer in his living room and he, the way he describes it is that a, a, a Russian Scud missile or, I don't know, a missile. He thought the Russians were attacking. That's his first thought. A sound, I don't know why I'm laughing. My dad's like totally has PTSD from this. Ripping through the living room. And an insane, like, you know, not homeless, like an insane, like rich Armenian lady who has severe mental illness. Uh, but driving like a brand new Range Rover, uh, drove her car through my dad's living room and missed him by three feet. He said he'd never heard something so loud, like the sound of glass and drywall and, and you know, steel. And uh, he's, he's traumatized. Now, why, why'd you laugh? Well, probably the same reason why you laugh when you say good morning. You just, when you're nervous, you start doing that little giggle. So what do we have? We have my dad. Uh, he moves, you know, and I, I told my dad, you know, what the racists tell him. I said, why don't you go back to your country? He said, huh? I said, why don't you take your shit and go back to your fucking country where you come from? He's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, there's nothing for you here. You came here for a reason, for a better life. You got that. Your son became, you know, is living the American dream. I am the American dream. And now... Koreatown's a complete shithole. It smells. There's homeless people everywhere. Like, get your shit. Go to Gangnam style. Go back to Korea. And, and like, live with Koreans. Hang out with your homies that are still alive. And eat, like, the shit that you like to eat. And don't ever struggle trying to speak someone else's... Go back to your country! (laughs) That's what I said to him. This is before the Armenian incident. And so... This lady decided, and I go, I don't, you know, I wasn't there, so I'm calling my mom, like, what the fuck's going on? And she's like, ah, the police are here, they won't arrest her. And she, you know, she's filming her, and this woman looks just insane. And they, you know, I, I ended up calling the police department, they're like, yeah, she was, in her mind, she was reenacting a scene from a movie. Because my parents have a huge lawn, like, this, it's not like she, she had to drive way up the lawn to do that. And I was like, this bitch almost fucking killed my father. Excuse my language. She needs to be imprisoned immediately. And they're like, yeah, but she she didn't. It's property damage. I'm like, so someone like that. Anyways, I won't get into all that. I'm going to, I'm going to end up getting really angry. And I don't, I don't like that. I was cussing already. (sighs) My question is, what does it mean? Right. It it probably means nothing, but I'm, I'm going to get to mine now. Uh, you know, spends his whole life living in Koreatown, moves out into strange part of LA that he's never been. And within less, this is less than one day of moving into, I mean, shit's everything, everything's still in boxes. And at least he has the TV set up so he can watch his Netflix shows. Oh, you see Dama? Very bloody, very disgusting. Oh, why are you watching it then? And as he's watching this, like a missile, this lady launches her Range Rover into the house And that would have been the end of my dad. He would have died while watching Dahmer with Korean subtitles on. What does it mean? Does it mean he should get the F out? Does does it mean he should go to Korea? Does Does it mean he should move back to Koreatown? Now, here's mine. Back to me. I live... You know, I don't like... I'm a a daddy and and mommy's uh, boy. So I don't like living that far away. So, of course, I got to get a house right near them. Um, much nicer neighborhood though. So I moved to this beautiful neighborhood. Uh, some people call it, uh, the Chinese Beverly Hills and it's this huge house and I get this wonderful studio. You know, this is all strange for me because you guys know if you guys have been listening to, there's something self, uh, destructive about me and that I, I can't allow myself to have nice things. Or at least live in nice places. So I'll always the, 
like the places I live always have to have spider webs, mold, uh, asbestos, um, you know, assholes and, and no windows. It's <laughs> just like, uh, I don't know if you guys seen, uh, this movie funny pages, but like the, the, mo the, the basement that this kid moves into is basically where I was living for decades, even after I became wealthy. Uh, so I, I have this new place and this is, this is what two days, not, not as bad as my dad, two days. Um, you know, I move in this house and it has this beautiful back house, huge windows, a lot of sunlight. And, you know, whoever was living there before was using it as a yoga Pilates studio. And I'm unpacking my stuff, you know. I, I got my easel out. I'm taking my paints out. And I just, you know, I sit down on the chair to like, you know, I don't know if you guys know, but I'm a sensitive artist. And I just, I just get really emotional. I think about my dad, like, almost dying by just this random act of randomness. Um, and I think about wealth and poverty and homelessness and super, you know, I've been, I've been poor. I've been homeless. I've been middle class. I've been upper middle class. I've been, uh, kind of rich. I've been super rich. I, I've been up and down the scale and to be just sitting here on a weekday afternoon, beautiful day, sun is out. Uh, I get to express, you know, in this world of, you know, who knows what the future holds and all this uh, anxiety and unsureness and unstableness. And I, I still get to just like have a space where I get to create, I get to express myself. And, and I'm just sitting on this beautiful vintage, super expensive chair, looking at a blank canvas and a, I was a, a fucking hawk. A giant hawk just crashes, just splats. I don't know how this thing's still alive. Spoiler alert. Crashes through the window. Because, I, like I said, there's, there's these giant windows. The glass just comes shattering. You know, some of it hit, hit my Crocs. Um, no cuts. I'm okay. And it just hits the ground like nothing happened. Like it was like a, a linebacker just going through... It crashes down on the ground and, like, looks up at me like, hey, what's up? And, you know, a little bit scared. And I don't know what to do. Um, I And I sit there. And, of course, you guys know, if you guys know me, know my work, that I'm, like, obsessed with comic books. I go to, I, I spend thousands of dollars going to the therapist where they have to explain to me where I'm not Batman. I'm not Joker. That life is a real thing. It's not a comic book. And I go, is it? Like, if this was a comic book written by you know, Bob Kane and Bill Finger, like, I would, it would be my duty to become Hawkman, or, you know, Hawk something, Hawk, Hawk Lad, that's how Batman, you know, he's chilling in his, uh, um, I don't know, what would you call his room, his library, and giant bat smashed through, and that's when he said, criminals are a cowardly and superstitious lot, and, uh, he decided to be, don the image of a bat because that strikes fear into the heart of so I'm going on and on and this was supposed to be a fast question my question to you guys is my father's sitting at home just chilling and an Armenian in a Range Rover just I'm, does he have to be it either means nothing and life is just random or it means something that he should do something I, I would like to and for me I'm at a certain place in my life I'm a family guy now. Like, my life is much different than it was 10 years ago. Hey, Big Mac DVD, I say! Like, I, like, I, I have a life where I do what I want. I, the the, the self-affirmations every morning. I am enough. I, the fake it till you make it. It, it happened. I've, I've done the I am enough for so long that it, it, I have actually believe it now. When I wake up, I don't go, oh, I got to wake up and I got to prove to everyone that I, I, I'm in, I, like, my music and my acting and my, my art and my sculptures and my performance, like, uh, my immersive experience, it's just like, I'm enough. I don't, I, I am enough. Uh, and so, what does it mean? I don't know what the chant, I don't, and, you know, I, I took pictures, obviously, because I'm, you know, 
uh, I'll, I'm thinking of whether I should put on the gram or not. But I, you know, I the, I opened the window, the hawk flew out, and uh, I eased it out with my super rare Japanese broom that I've never used except for just to hang on the wall and look at it. Uh, one of the last from the hand making or whatever. Um, but I had animal control come and uh, you know figure out how to not you know these are put up curtains, which takes away the sunlight. Um, and they looked at the picture and they were like, that is just one of the most rarest hawks. I forgot, you know, I wrote all this stuff down and it wasn't a rare hawk. It was the, a rare hawk that was that size. I mean, this thing could have like picked me up and flew away with me. And, and, and I kind of wish he did. Um, but, uh, what does it all mean guys? I'm a little bit lost because, uh, you know, I'm a little bit superstitious sometimes when I need to be. And then most of the time I'm like, whatever happens, happens. Everything happens for a reason. I'm that guy. So what is the reason within one week, within making these huge life decisions, a hawk crashes into my pantry, my yoga Pilates studio slash art, uh, you know, kiln, whatever you want to call whatever it was going to be. And what is my dad? What is it? What, what, what do I do? I'm lost. I need some guidance. Thank you. Dosumeh.